Hey guys and welcome back to a new episode of Android News, this time for December 2024. This is the format where I always go over all those awesome and not so awesome changes to the Android Kotlin, Kotlin multi-platform ecosystem that affect us Android developers, so you don't need to research all that on your own. And the first awesome news is that Android version 16 is already in developer preview. This version is called Baklava, sounds very delicious. And you might have noticed that this is actually quite early for an Android preview to be released. And that is because Google apparently plans to publish new Android versions more frequently than before. So that means this Baklava release will already come out in Q2 in the next year, so uh, April, May or June, instead of in the third quarter uh, which was the, the usual release time for such an Android release. And therefore, Google now plans to actually have two such releases. So in the fourth quarter of the next year, we will have another Android release. However, these types of releases will slightly differ. So that means this new Baklava release will be the more major one, which will really bring most of the behavioral changes. So new functionality that we did not really know before. And the release from the fourth quarter uh, will, will be more a minor release that fixes bug, that improves performance, uh, certain optimizations where maybe existing features may be updated. I personally don't really know what I think about that. I think one version a year is actually completely enough um, because every single Android version comes with upgrades and especially smaller teams of Android developers can, I think, quickly be overwhelmed by all those changes and they are already overwhelmed. So I don't fully understand why Google now decided to actually uh, launch two new Android versions every single year because in my experience, the real world code bases are often already uh, flooded with these typical version checks where you say build that version SDK must be this, must be that, must be this. Android projects are already full of that and now now we will have even more of that. So I don't know what I think about that. I don't like it too much. But to talk about the changes that Android Baklava brings, and that is uh, at least those changes that were announced with the first developer preview, there's on the one hand an API that allows us developers to embed the actual Android photo picker into our app. So, so far, if we wanted to use the Android photo picker, then we could uh, launch that with an activity result launcher and then a little uh, bottom sheet will open up. But this new API in Android Baklava will now allow us to actually embed this as an actual view, as an actual UI component in our app. So it doesn't really appear as a sheet, as a it's kind of separate app anymore. I don't know if this will be groundbreaking. I think it's cool. But it's at least nothing that I really desired when using this photo picker sheet. Because I think in regards to usability, maybe we can argue that uh, embedding this in your app can be a bit better. But I think regardless of uh, if, if we embed it or if we show it as a sheet, users should be able to know that it's all about picking a photo, right? And I think in most cases where you really want to have an embedded photo picker in your app, then that is because you want to style it in, with your own app's style guidelines. And then you can't embed it anymore because then you need like external storage permission. You need to fetch photos on your own. So if you have something like a, the, the Instagram photo picker, for example, uh, where you can then um, manually select a photo with their own styling and share that in your story or so. Another change from Android Baklava will be called Health Connect. And that's in the end a way that lets us read and write users' medical data, of course, with their consent. And from now on, these developer previews will actually go on. So there will be a second one. I don't know if there will be a third one, but then the, uh, the beta release phase will start. Google will keep on releasing beta, beta values. So these next, uh, next month's Android news episodes here will be juicy again. Coming to the next news, and that is my personal favorite. Only until tomorrow, there is still a black week going on on PL coding. So that means you can get 30% on all my premium courses and all my bundles. That is the biggest sale of the year. And you can also get a big discount on the new mobile dev campus for which i just released a completely new coding challenge today so if you want to take part at that coding challenge get mockups for a meme creator app that lets you create and edit memes then click the link down below join the campus and uh, make sure to not miss this deal for the courses next up we have the release of Emper version 0.50 so Emper is the new build system built on top of gradle which is uh, managed and built and maintained by jetbrains so the idea is gradle is super complex gradle is still a good build system because it offers a lot of functionality so why not build something on top of that that makes configuring it a bit easier while still making use of all the functionality that is already implemented in gradle itself and the new version just brings certain changes um, like that we can now for example use the, the parcelize gradle plugin with uh, the Emper configuration but the fact that this wasn't possible before still shows us that uh, Emper is in an early stage i personally haven't tried it out yet i think it's promising but um, i would not yet migrate to something in uh, that kind of early stage at least for a more serious project 
Then the next change is that Kotlin version 2.1.0 is now stable and released and that really comes with a bunch of cool changes and also some sad changes. On the one hand, it brings a new language feature and that is called a guard condition inside of a when branch. That new feature is currently still experimental, it's still in preview mode and if you want to use this with Kotlin 2.1.0 you have to explicitly opt into that with uh, the Kotlin compiler options. But so far up to this version if we have a when expression and we check the uh, a specific type of an object in the when expression. For example, you have your typical uh, sealed interface for screen actions, and then you want to extract these in when expressions. So you say one action is action text change, is action on button click. Then you could not use the uh, smart casting capabilities inside of the when condition itself. So in the actual branching logic. That now changed with this guard clause. I will uh, display that somewhere here. So you get an impression of how this now works. So we can check for the type of an object at the same time of us checking for um, a specific field, if that maybe has a certain value or if that matches a condition. So we can say something like, okay, is the action actually a text changed action? And is the text that was changed actually equal to hello world? Chaining this is now possible with this new guard feature in Kotlin 2.1.0, but as I said, still in the preview mode and you won't be able to use this just by bumping up your version, but you need to opt into it at this point. Then this new version comes with uh, some new compiler warnings for the K2 compiler, so mainly just linting stuff, which is interesting. Maybe you'll notice that if you're using K2 already. A cool thing is that it now comes with basic support for exporting Kotlin code to Swift code directly. So Swift code is the language we use for a native iOS development. And what this now means is that an Apple target in a Kotlin multi-platform project can now consume a library written in Kotlin code because the Kotlin code library can be directly transformed to uh, Swift code without actually an intermediate step of uh, converting that to Objective-C, which was the case before. So that means if you actually have a Kotlin multi-platform project, then you can take your iOS-specific Kotlin code from that Kotlin multi-platform project, so what is inside of your iOS main um, module, you can take that, pretty much extract it as a library, and use that library in a native iOS project. And that is pretty cool because I think um, this is still one of the the biggest weaknesses at this point of Kotlin multi-platform um, when it comes to the iOS interoperability because Apple doesn't really care about technologies like KMP sadly and therefore does not really work together with the JetBrains to, to make it easier for us developers to um, let KMP developers work together with uh, native iOS code. On the other hand for Android code this is possible and much easier because on the one hand of course Android also uses Kotlin but also because JetBrains uh, works together with Google pretty closely and Google also officially supports KMP. Then this Kotlin version update uh, brings a better support for the ARM64 architecture, so the uh, CPU architecture you know from these um, Mac M chips like M1, M2 and so on. So the KMP code runs a bit better on these types of CPUs. Additionally, this update brings incremental compilation for um, Kotlin WebAssembly. So incremental compilation is this kind of mechanism that only the changed code of your code base gets compiled. And this just strongly speeds up your builds because it doesn't always need to rebuild the whole project, but just the code and the files uh, that contain changes. And lastly, this Kotlin version brings a, a bit more of a unified configuration for the different um, compiler options for different KMP targets. So it's quite likely that uh, that you want to have different compiler options for desktop, then you want to have for Android, then you want to have for iOS, and uh, that is something you need to configure in Gradle, but this new Kotlin version allows you to uh, configure this in a bit easier and more convenient way. Something that is a bit sad is what I found here on Utrack. You can see it is about review and revoking postpone the language features. So there are certain language features in Kotlin already which we can opt into, which are still considered ex experimental. For example, those explicit backing fields or value classes, which both say unstable feature. And it seems like with all those new changes to the um, new Kotlin K2 compiler, the Kotlin team decided to uh, postpone some of these features, which we've all been looking for already, especially these explicit backing fields. We've been hearing about for, for such a long time, I think even back then in Kotlin 1.6, 1.7 or so, we, we heard about this feature and we were looking forward to it uh, very, very eagerly. And now it will be postponed even more. I can imagine that this is <laughs> quite a pain to build a new compiler and make this work with um, all the existing stuff already and then also making it support the, these new features. But it's still sad, of course, and um, I'm still looking forward to, to, to those features. Doesn't mean that they won't come, but that it will probably just take a bit longer for them to come. But then another little bit of a sad news is that our dear image loading library Picasso has been officially deprecated. 
So if you're spending your time in more modern Android code bases, um, specifically with Compose, then that probably won't affect you because then you're used to using image loading libraries like Coil. But especially in the earlier days, maybe a few years ago, Picasso was a really, really popular image loading library. And I'm, and I'm pretty, pretty sure that a lot of products out there still use the library, which now have to uh, sadly migrate to a different image loading library. And I found something else really interesting. That is now another piece of news. That is that Google apparently works on a new navigation library, on a new official Jetpack Compose navigation library. You can see this here is from the Android open source project where you can actually see the source code of Android. And here there are certain commits where you, where you can see add new module for experimental library, add base classes for nav3. So probably this library will be called nav3 or navigation3. You can also see on the left here that... Uh, some known names from, from the Google team are working on that or at least reviewing the code. My feelings about this are also mixed, just like for the more frequent Android releases. I think we just need to wait for the actual reasons why they are working on a separate navigation library. It's not a secret that navigation in JPEG Compose has always been a mess, especially with the string routes from uh, that we used to use before. But now that we have this new type safe navigation system, it's not perfect, but I think it's decent now. It's not that much of a pain anymore um, compared to using those string routes. So I'm still curious why they decided to make a dedicated navigation library. I think it's again a little bit of a pain depending on what Google will then recommend if they will only recommend this new library when it's stable versus the current Jetpack navigation because navigation is something that is usually uh, quite a pain to migrate for existing projects. But I assume this won't be something they do that they just uh, deprecate the old library, but rather provide two libraries, which would then again just uh, confuse new people which library to pick. So I think it's just a pain that such fundamental things like navigation are constantly changing. We still have to wait. Maybe this will be a very cool library and there are certain problems that I don't see at the current types of approach that this library solves. But all in all, I think this just contributes to new people or even experienced people being more and more confused about what to pick. All right, that's it. As I said, if you are eager to participate in coding challenges, win money for that, ask all your questions to me, my team, to uh, the campus community. And if you want to hear of these news as the first person, then join the Mobile Dev Campus and also make sure if you want to learn and development, become ready for the industry, uh, check out these courses. This is really the best deal of the year. There won't be a bigger discount for quite a while. Thanks for watching. I will see you back in the next video. Have an amazing rest of your week. Bye bye.